Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode. My name is Dr. Paul, I'm here with Dr. Stavros. Right, so today we're gonna do is answer some of your Reddit questions. You've asked questions about USMLE prep, clinicals, residency, basic sciences. So we wanna make sure we give you guys excellent responses to your questions. So before we dive in, do us a huge favor, hit that like button below, subscribe while you're at it, set up notifications. We'll let you know every time we release one of these highly informative videos. All right, doc, let's dive in with question number one. Perfect. All right, suitable details, 7875, posted two days ago. Most important subjects in medical school? Hey, would you like to know which are, would like to know which are the most important subjects to master in order to become a good doctor student? As well as I accept any Holy Grail textbook to, uh, would recommend me to know cover to cover. Guys, schools have curriculums, right? So every curriculum, every school, they release their curriculum from anatomy, histology, you really have to master every topic, use the textbooks to really understand the material based upon also what you do in undergrad. Did you, were you a science major? Were you not? A lot of students who have seen, right, including myself, including us, some students were history majors, bio, biochem, chem. So it really, there's a little edge, there's a little advantage for those that have done that in undergrad. Either way, read the textbooks, learn the information. There is no important subject. Everything is important. As you continue in medical school, you'll see <clears throat> path, pathophys, phys, farm are the big boys, but there's micro, there's biochem, there's everything. You need, it's all intertwined. It all fits together as like one big puzzle. You realize it later in life. You only realize it in the first two years of medical school. You'll have that aha moment when you're in residency or if not sooner, you'll be like, wow, now I understand why I had to learn all those pathways. I mean, that was my answer. Yeah. So a lot of people are, I'm looking at the comments here. Everyone's responding, first aid, first aid, first aid. But he doesn't say which ones are the best for or what Holy Grail textbook there is for step one. He said, what's the most important subjects in med school? And your response was spot on. Everything. Otherwise, they wouldn't teach it. Yeah. Do you need to know embryo? Yes. Do you need to know histo? Yes. Do you need to know farm? Yes. You need to know it all. Otherwise, it wouldn't be there. Is accounting important for med school? No. That's why it's not in the curriculum. This is a lazy question. And, I, you know, I'm getting a little... Um, tired of seeing the same sorts of lazy questions over and over of what corners can I cut? What's, uh, what uh, magic pill can I take that'll get me a 260 without me having to do any work? Guys, it's med school. If you wanna do something easy, don't go to med school. If you wanna become a doctor, just it, uh, submit to the fact that you have to know a lot of stuff. There's no shortcuts. You have to go hard in every class, know it. And then you need to know that stuff for step one. And clinical, same thing. There's no shortcuts. So they're, they're all important. It's medicine. Is histology less important than physio? Maybe if there's a physio question that you're dealing with, but at the same time, if you're dealing with a patient, histology comes into place because they're made of tissues. Physiology comes into place because they're, they're made of systems that work in yeah. harmony yeah. together. There's, you you got to know it all. Guys. You know, I think what happens is in undergrad, I mean, I, I, for me, for a lot of my friends too, a lot of the classes we felt that they weren't necessary. Maybe they weren't, right? But they make you overall more rounded individual, right? Well-rounded individual talking about religion and, and then, you know, history and art and music and sciences. But then when you get to school like medicine, medical school, everything you learn, it's going to be part of your education, your knowledge, your foundation moving forward. The high yield books are great, but those are kind of like, like those cliff notes kind of like, yeah. you know, it's all high yield. This is where after you learn the knowledge and you understand mm -hmm. the foundation of biochem and anatomy and histology, you say, you know what? There's so much information that I'm taking in daily. I will forget. We all will. So as you move forward in your curriculum, you use first aid and other books like that that help you keep up with refreshing the information. If you're going to go in and say, I'm going to learn the high yield. It's like when I did biochem, I did an analytical chemistry. And I remember we spent 14 weeks analyzing uh, chemicals and we did a very very like detailed steps and it took a long long time we went to a conference in boston and they pushed the button and then within seconds we had sodium the potassium everything broken down and i said we spent 14 weeks the doctor goes yeah but you understand now the steps if you just press the, the go button and it gives you all the analysis you never understood or appreciated the steps that went through figuring out every component of this surprise chemical that I gave you, right? So that's the whole point, thing, guys. Yeah. This is medicine. It's not going in, like you said, accounting or, you know, art or, so or music. This is, this is medicine. You know, you could pay for, for salad, for tuition to get to school. You just got to put the knowledge, you got to put the time in. It will take a long time, but you have to buckle down and learn. 
Don't take shortcuts. You won't do well in step. You won't get into residency you want. This is the truth. People won't tell you. We'll tell you. It's the truth. So, and, and we're not trying to be jerks here. And I, I realize I probably come across in some of my answers as one, but my goal and my job is to make sure that students set themselves up for success. And if I just play into this whole, take these shortcuts, it'll make your life easier. That's not what we're trying to do. We're not trying to make your life easier. We're trying to help you achieve your dreams, which is to become a practicing physician. And sometimes it takes the truth and not sugarcoating what medical school is, which is a lot of hard work. It takes that. It takes telling you guys when you're slacking off, when you're asking silly questions, you know, when it comes to prep or even just med school, it's our job to make sure that we point out these errors so that you don't make them moving forward. So we, I just wanted to throw that in because after I... I answered that. I realized it sounded a little harsh, but it's sometimes someone has to be the bad guy. And if me being the bad guy helps you realize that you might be trying to take shortcuts and that helps you step it up a little bit and you get 10%, 20% better then I did my job. So that's, what's important to me. And those watching will understand because if you let's say do, you know, uh, neurology, you might think, I don't want to be a neurologist, but then when you're studying for your board exams, those are certain questions. And if you just dump, let's say sacrifice two, three questions per block, that can be the deciding factor of pass or fail. That can be the deciding factor of getting a 230 versus 220. So you see everything will link and connect. You might not realize it now, guys, but trust us, we've gone through all this. It will connect later. So buckle down, reach out to us if you have any questions, but you know, mm -hmm. you really got to sacrifice. Yep. All right, question, is this question number two? Yes. All right, so the question is from enough already, yeah. Am I cut out for med school? Hi, everyone. So. I'm going to be graduating from a top 15 undergraduate university in the U.S. this year with a, about a 3.8 GPA in the business school. But I want to help people, and I'm interested in medicine, specifically psychiatry, though I don't know if I'm cut out for it. Here's the deal. My sophomore year, I took chemistry, and I absolutely effing hated it. I got a B. I didn't go to lecture, didn't do the reading. I, it sucked the life out of me. One, I attribute this to two things. One, I was in a horrible place mentally, suffering from some pretty severe depression and an eating disorder, made it pretty hard to stay motivated. Sorry to hear that. Two, oh, yeah. as I've hinted, I never really enjoyed science. I hate chemistry, I hate biology. I've never learned about anatomy, so I think I might take a class to see if I like it. I do, however, love physics, environmental science, and psychology. I've always prided myself on being a disciplined and hard worker, and I think now that I'm in a better place mentally, I really applied myself, I could do well in a post back program. Speaking of which, how important is the caliber of the post back program you go to? I'd love to have some money. I'd love to save some money and go somewhere in state. But there aren't many prestigious universities where I live. Anyways, don't hold back. If you think I'm crazy for thinking I can be a doctor, tell me. Thanks in advance. You want to jump on this one first? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I, love, I love that they want to help. Unfortunately, you're looking at a four-year commitment um, to really go through a lot of different types of um, topics in medicine. So if you love one or two topics, that's great. But you hate bio, you hate chemistry. Who's to say you hate microbiology? Who's to say you're going to hate pharmacology? So all that time, the money spent into taking the MCATs, getting into school, realizing that it's going to be torturous because unfortunately you have to go through the gauntlet. I'll say gauntlet because for those that maybe are not interested in the material, it's going to be torture every day. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not an overnight thing. It's not like a course for three weeks and you become an MD. It's four years of learning the material, taking tests, continuous exams, clinical rotations. Now, as you do that, you might realize, hey, I love psych still, which is great. There's doctors we work with right now that went through all of it, and they say, I love psych. However, you have to go through four years of uh, school, and it might be really challenging for you, my friend. So there's other ways around it. You know, you don't have to go into psychiatry. You can do psychology. You can do other things. You don't have to yeah. go into MD. Yeah. You can do social work. There's many things you can do that yeah. really take that business aspect of psych without going through MD. Leave that spot for someone else who has a passion for medicine. Does that make sense? Honestly, that's how I feel. Yeah, I agree with you on everything you said. A um, couple of specific things I want to pull out from this question. You want to help people. Keep in mind, pretty much everything you do in life is helping people. Yes. You know, whether you're a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, a toll booth worker, you're working with people and you're helping them get from one problem to solving that problem. So whether it's I'm on a bridge and I want to cross into a different country, you're a toll booth worker, you're helping people. No matter what you're doing, you're helping people. Another thing um, that I really want to jump on here is you, you say you've never really enjoyed science. You hate chemistry, you hate biology, you've never learned about anatomy. If you don't like science, med school is probably not right for you. No. What I think though is 
you love psychology. So just because you love psychology doesn't necessarily mean you're going to like psychiatry. Very, very different. One deals with some pretty severe mental diseases and disorders. Psychology, though, you could do things like, you know, help people in relationships, be a marriage counselor. Like you said, social worker, you can do the same thing. It sounds to me more like you're probably a little more inclined to go that route. Maybe you could do the PhD route or the master's route of psychology where you're taking a lot of psychology classes, but not necessarily medicine classes. Sounds to me like that might be a better route for you. Um, you know, you say you're, you're disciplined and a hard worker. That's good because one way or another, if you want to get to the point where you can help people with their actual problems, like in medicine, you're going to have to go through a lot of schooling. But I would say if you really like psych, get a psych degree, do a psych degree and see if you want to pursue psychology. Great rewarding career where you're helping people, but you don't have to go through all the science because trust me, if you are not interested in science, you are going to hate medical school with a passion. I love science and it was still tough. Sure. So sure. keep that in mind. You know, just because you want to help people doesn't mean you have to get an MD. You know, I, I think there's a lot of people who went the MD route because they thought this and then might have realized, hey, okay, I'm a psychiatrist and now I can prescribe drugs. But what I really want to do is just talk to people in an office, which you could be a, a psychologist or a social worker. And, you know, I mean, use social media, meaning reach out to students, medical yeah. students on Instagram, Facebook. We didn't have that growing up. So, you know, I have always had a passion for medicine. I went into medicine. I, I had my degree undergrad. If a lot of, I tell a lot of students now, including people that I, that even friends of mine, friends of mine, they call me up, they go, okay, talk to my son, my daughter. What can I say? You could reach out. I can't simulate medical school for you. I can't simulate what's going to go through your mind when you do biochem and anatomy and histology and, you know, cadavers. What you can do, go online, there's videos, there's online, uh, you know, webinars, there's uh, students you can reach out to, hey, Tommy, you know, what was your day to day? Or you could follow their profile because they usually show what they do. They're in anatomy, they're in histology, they're studying godlike hours. So you can get a taste of what your life will be for the next four years. Just use social media to your advantage. So. Good stuff. All right, let's dive right. into the next question. <clears throat> let's get a juicy one. Four days ago, May apples, four days ago, med school in Europe after pre-med in the us in the US. Hi, I've been thinking about this. I like to go to Europe, we all would, for medical school after, finished my, after finishing or finished my pre-med, but I'm not sure if that's even possible. Couldn't find much online. So if anyone has any information about this, do let me know. Thanks. Want to jump in, Doc? Either way. Sure. Europe. Um, I mean, there's, I know lots, we know lots of students who come from schools in Europe. Sure. Uh, just Google medical schools in Europe or U.S. medical curriculums in Europe. I mean, I know there's a school in Ireland. I know that's not necessarily what you're thinking, but, you know, if you're looking to get across the Atlantic Ocean, uh, Ireland's an option. There's schools in Poland. There's schools in uh, England. There's schools all over Ukraine, Russia. There's schools all over the place. This is Plenty of opportunity. You got to make sure, though, that if you want to come back to the U.S., then you have to make sure you're not going to, let's say, school in Russia, where they're teaching you to become a doctor in Russia. Typically, what you want in this scenario, if you want to come back to the U.S., which I'm assuming you probably do, is you want more of an offshore school, which means with following a U.S.-based curriculum, just not in the U.S. You got to be really careful. You don't set yourself down a path that yeah. you're going to really struggle to come back to. Now, if it's going to Europe for school. I wouldn't necessarily recommend you try to go to med school in Europe just because you want to be in Europe. Maybe consider trying to get into med school here or in the Caribbean if you don't think you can get in here just because you're going to make your life a lot easier down the road if you want to come back to the U.S. Sure. With that said, if you want to go to Europe and stay there, by all means, there's millions of, not millions, there's lots of schools over there that you could get into. So, you know, a lot of it depends on your goals down the road. Do you want to come back or not? Do you speak a different language? A lot of things come into play, but it's definitely possible. We've, over the last decade, have dealt with hundreds of students in this scenario. I mean, everything, you, everything Doc, you said is spot on, like always. I mean, you have to think of the USMLE, if you're going to come back to the States, the curriculum could be up to, up to six years, sometimes seven. You know, there's a lot of research you need to, to, to really put in to figure out if this is the school that you want to go to, especially if the outcome is in the States. So do the, do the uh, due diligence, Google it, you know, social media, reach out to people because it is nice to feel that you're 
in Europe, just like the Caribbean. People go to Caribbean, they go, oh, you're in paradise. Well, when I have to study all day and be in a class all day and having you know, the options of snorkeling, go to the beach is nice, just like in Europe. Let's say you're in France or Ukraine or anywhere, beautiful country. You'll be there for one reason only is to study. You know, and make sure that it's in English or if not their native language. So it might feel like it's going to be amazing to travel, but you're going to be there going to work. So it might be a little more challenging for you to, to buckle down and concentrate and not be distracted. So I think of it that way too. Either way, best of luck. Good luck. Yeah. Make sure you do your research and homework to make sure that you don't put yourself in a situation that yeah. you're going to really fight to get out of. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Do we room for one more? Yeah, yeah, we got time for one more. Let me grab one here. Nice juicy one. All right. Ooh. All right. Is pathology a good medical branch to study for? That's the question. Wow. Just sure. If you, if you like path, sure, it's great. Um, but what is good? Good, good is very uh, individual. Is good. Are you looking for lifestyle? Are you looking for pay? Are you looking for patient interact? I mean, what's good? In my mind, every branch of medicine is good if it's the right branch for you. Let's talk maybe then about what can someone expect with pathology? Sure. I mean, it's, I mean, pathology, it, it, the hours are great, but you know, it's not that much interaction with patients, right? You're looking at slides, you have certain like uh, pattern recognition. I mean, and that's what whoever this, this individual is, if you're a medical student or you're planning to go to medical student, plan to go into medicine, you definitely want to tap into a resource to see this is a life for you. So if you're an elective, get pathology as an elective and see if this is what you, you can do. People fall in love with certain um, thoughts of becoming something. For example, let's say I'm like, you know, I want to be CEO of Google. Okay, great. But you don't know their hours, you don't know their, their, their education, their, their, their criteria, their requirements. So to say I want to be a surgeon or a surgery, great. The surgery is great. But can you, can you live that lifestyle? Pathology is great, but can you live that lifestyle? You know me, I'm always out and about loving to talk to people. I would probably go stir crazy in, in a room set up with a slide because I need to be interacting with you, with I, with students, with patients. So it depends what you want out of life. Yeah. Others want to be in radiology want to be a firefighter, a policeman, want to be an astrophysicist. That's the whole point. Pathology is great. You'll talk to those who do pathology. I love it. You might talk to those who hate it and say, I don't like pathology. I mean, yeah, the, be the, be the best you could do is do a rotation and path. That's it. Get a sense of what it's like for yourself and then make that decision. Because you, like you said, someone who loves it is going to say it's great. It's the best thing. Someone who hates it is going to say it's the worst thing. So you got to jump in and do it yourself. I think we have time for one more question. You want to jump right. in? Yeah, Ipkos, five months ago. Farm and Anki. Hi, everyone. What is the best way to study and understand basic farm? The calculations, part like pharmacokinetics, pharmodynamics, and, and be very good at it, which Anki Deck is the best out there, needed, needed to work on my weak areas. So honestly, guys, I know these are magic pills. There's, you talk to 10 different students, they'll tell you 10 different answers. I would say try it out, see if you like it. Farm is very, very challenging. You have to just buckle down, learn the pathways, understand the, 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 the name of the drugs, met, MOAs, met, uh, the mechanism of action, side effects. I never liked farm, but then I realized I need to, to do well to pass, to, to, to pass my board. So then I just buckled down and memorized the heck out of it and accepted the fact, embraced the fact that I hated it, then I loved it. It was a challenge for me. So you could try Anki. You could do farm recall, first aid. There's tons of books out there. Whatever works for you. I mean, try it out. If it doesn't, it doesn't. If it does, stay with it. Stick with it. So yeah. I mean, the best way to study and understand, first of all, is to pay attention in your class. Yes. Your you're under, you're, you're yeah. med school, typically it's fourth semester. Your farm yeah. class. That's yeah. going to be their best bet. Um, calculations like pharmacokinetics, pharmaco same thing. You're going to learn that in your basics. Um, so pay attention, work hard, study hard for the test. Uh, if you know, if you're out, let's say you've been out of school for a while and you need to refresh yourself, don't just rely on, you know, your first aid because it's going to give you the very basic calculations, but it's not going to help you really apply it. Get yourself a BRS or for the farm or even just review your farm text mm -hmm. and then do practice questions because giving you calculations is one thing, but being able to look at a vignette and pull out the actual data and plug it in the right sections is usually the challenging part for students. Otherwise, it'd be a joke, right? So make sure you do that. Implement some, some, some questions that force you to call upon this knowledge. That's going to be the only way you're going to master that. As far as good Anki deck, uh, I would recommend making your own. When you go through this, make your own deck. Make sure. your own index cards. But remember, if you make your own, go back and use them. 
People like to put that, that busy work and then they just put it aside and they make thousands of index cards and they go, and I ask them, did you use them? Not really. So tell me, so you're telling me by writing them, you memorize them? Not really. So what'd you do? Busy work. And that's why you didn't do well. So if you put the work in, embrace the fact that you should be able to read the material too. So please don't, don't, don't expel your energy that way. Put the work in, use the cards, read them. So there you go. All right. That is all the time we have for today. Hopefully that was helpful. If it was, leave us a comment in the comment section below. We would love to hear from you guys. Hit the like button. We would highly, highly appreciate that. Subscribe, set up notifications. We'll let you know every time we release a brand new video. Thank you for stopping by. See you guys on the next episode. See you guys. Hey there, thanks for watching. We appreciate you spending some time with us today. We've got a couple more great videos. We got one up here, we got one up there. See you guys on the next video.